Welcome to Three Stuart Steam Plants Boiler Works. This is part four. Rinsing all the boiler fittings in clean water after they've been in the Kilrock K descaler for 24 hours. And doing the same with the three boiler barrels. All traces of lime scale seem to have disappeared. Now comes the difficult part. Let the boiler barrel polishing begin. I've changed the acid in the small pot and I've put all the fittings back in there. In the previous episode I showed a similar thing but the acid had turned clear and all the parts were covered in lime scale. Another 24 hours later and the acid hasn't changed colour but the parts have changed colour, the lime scale has gone from the outside as well as the inside. I'm taking the parts out of the pot of acid now because I want to put them into clean water to get rid of every trace of the Kilrock K, which is a trade name for this kettle descaler. It's very good stuff to use in kettles as well. This is the water tub, and as you can see, some of the parts are quite copper coloured and others are still tarnished with lime scale. The acid pot wasn't really big enough, so I had to do this in two stages. Very soon, all of the fittings will more or less look the same colour as you see here. That's the fun part over with. Now it's time to clean the boilers. These are the two 501 boilers after 24 hours in the acid bath. I need to make sure that all traces of the acid are washed out from within the boilers. So what you're seeing here, I actually did more than once. I also shook them about a bit. I didn't show that on the video because it looked a bit stupid. When doing this job, you have to make sure that the boilers are completely full of water. When the air bubbles stop, you're somewhere near. You can see me shaking the boilers. This makes the water slosh about inside if there's any air in there. I left the two 501 boilers for quite a while in the bowl of water. What I'm doing here is tying a piece of silicone rubber tubing onto the 504 boiler. And the time has come to lower the 504 boiler barrel into the acid bath. This boiler is considerably bigger than the 501s, but the design is more or less identical. Although it does have a couple more water tubes. And it has a central superheater pipe, like on the 501s. I lifted out the 501 boilers from the bowl and drained all the water out of them and here I'm immersing them again for a second time. It is very important to make sure that all traces of the acid is removed from the inside of the boilers. If you don't do this then the boiler could start being eaten away by the acid over time. So the job begins. Thankfully the acid has loosened a lot of the dirt on the underside which makes it much easier to remove using a piece of Scotch-Brite. I'm not too worried about the state of the tubes underneath because they're out of sight in the firebox. To get into the nooks and crannies, I use the combination of Scotch-Brite and a paintbrush, and sometimes both together by wrapping the Scotch-Brite around the paintbrush. This job is much easier to do in a bowl of water than it is to do dry. This is a stainless steel thread adapter for the steam valve. I used a small pair of pliers to initially grip it to rotate it, but then it turned freely by hand, and here it is in my hand. The boiler is not clean enough yet, so it's back into the water for another rub with the Scotch Brite. This was quite an unpleasant dirty job, because not only is there soot underneath the boiler, there's also steam oil residue, which has now transferred itself to my fingers. Here, for the final time, I remove the boiler from the bowl of water. Before starting on the next boiler, I think I need some more clean water in it. I remove the bowl from the bench, and now sat in the place of the bowl are all the cast iron boiler mountings for all of the boilers. One of the chimneys was not detachable, so that got painted along with the rest of the castings, but there are two more that need a separate coat of paint. I am now in the outer part of the workshop and as you can see, the 501 boiler is looking quite clean. It seems logical to use my polishing spindle to start the polishing process. What I'm doing here though is using a grinding wheel to reprofile the polishing wheel because over time this has become a bit uneven and it's very clogged up with the abrasive wax that they use on it. This job takes a bit of practice 
you must really hold on to the boiler very firmly because if the polishing wheel grabs it and throws it across the workshop it won't look too good. You will notice that I'm not wearing gloves which can be a problem when things that you're handling start to get warm but I do like to know where all my fingers are at all times. This is only my opinion, I am not saying that you shouldn't wear gloves when doing jobs like this but I'm always a bit worried that if I catch the glove in any of the parts that I'm working on I may find bits of my fingers still left in the glove when I remove them. This is my personal paranoia, mainly because I'm a keyboard player and I used to earn my living from doing this and I need as many fingers as possible. I prefer to finish off the job using some stuff called Brasso. This is Brasso wadding. It's really good stuff for polishing copper, brass and even silver, but I don't use much of that. The grade of copper used on these early boilers is not really what I'm used to. They are, after all, quite old. Modern copper seems to be more refined and polishes better. What I'm doing here is changing the polishing spindle's wheel for a softer one, which should give a better, less scratchy finish to the work. I will still finish off the job by hand using Brasso. Using a softer wheel on the polishing spindle does give a slightly better finish. As shown earlier in this episode, I'm using the grinding wheel to profile this polishing spindle wheel too. The feel is completely different with a softer wheel, but beware, it can grab the work without you even knowing about it and throw it across the workshop, so hang on to the part that you're polishing at all times. And if the part gets too hot, either wear some gloves, which as I've just mentioned, I never do, or just wait a while, put the part down, let it cool. You can clearly see the softer wheel flexes more and gets into the corners. The finish is not going to be perfect, but when I was happy with it, I finished it off by hand using Brasso wadding, as shown previously. You can clearly see the difference between the 501 boiler barrel that's been polished and the one that hasn't. I'm actually doing the main polishing using a cotton cloth. This polishing is a little bit academic because when you steam the boiler it will go dull again very quickly. But I think it's worth it, you can see the difference between the two boilers. And here they are sat in and amongst the boiler supports. In the next part of the series I'll be showing how I make all these parts look almost like new, without using much effort. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.